What's up, everyone? Uh, so season nine of Mortal Kombat 1 uh, dropped yesterday. Uh, this is a repeat or rerun of season one um, of Invasion Mode that you guys, um, some of you probably already did. Uh, if you have had the game since release, um, you've already experienced most of what this season has to offer. You're going to notice that a lot of things like skins and palettes, uh, you probably already own a lot of them. Um, if you go to the seasonal shop, you might even notice that you've already uh, bought everything from the previous season um, and um, for me anyway I went in and you know it was completely bought out there could be some new stuff in there um, for people who maybe haven't done the legacy tower that was introduced last season um, I don't know if all the skins that are in the seasonal shop are from you know strictly from season one or if some of them are also from the legacy tower um, but for me anyway everything was already bought out same thing with the shrine I went to the shrine and uh, apparently the shrine uh, doesn't have anything new um, this could be a glitch though because there are some people who were saying that they hadn't bought everything out uh, from the shrine from previous seasons and when they went to the shrine this season they said that uh, it was telling them it was already uh, bought out. So it's very possible that it's a glitch uh, that I'm not seeing new things in the shrine um, but uh, if not then you know yes they probably haven't added anything new uh, because this is a rerun season so full disclaimer I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, keep an eye on the shrine over the next few days uh, because if it is a bug or a glitch or something they'll probably fix it and add the items to the shrine um but having said that again this is going to be a very familiar season to you guys and uh, i'm just going to go over uh everything i know this is the first time that i've done a video on this channel a guide for mortal kombat on this channel that has commentary the reason i'm doing this is because i want to make sure that um i cover everything i get a lot of questions and comments from new players and veteran players um asking a lot of stuff about my setup and how to get places and things like that. So just to save time really and answer all your questions beforehand, um, I'm gonna try to do one of these actual like in-depth commentary videos where I'm actually showing everything to you guys, explaining everything. Uh, hopefully that'll make it easier for you going forward. Um, so having said that, let me cover some changes um, and updates to Mortal Kombat 1, uh, not specifically just Invasion Mode, but overall, um, that came with this season. This one actually came last season, but um, people, I think a lot of people missed it. So if you go to Video and Audio in the settings, you can actually change the menu theme from New Era, which is the old uh, menu theme, uh, to Chaos, which is the new menu theme. Um, so you see if I switch it over to Chaos here, so this is what we got last season. You guys remember this. Uh, this is the chaos uh, theme that we had um, with that opening with the jump scare <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, you guys can actually change this now back to the original if you want to. They added this in the last uh, season. Um, I think halfway through the season or something, they made an update that allowed you to change that. Um, but I think a lot of people missed it. So I'm just pointing it out so you guys can actually see that. Um, it also, it does change the opening. So if you set it to this one here, like the clean, the new era, uh, you're not going to get that havoc jump scare that some people were like, what the hell, uh, before. So throwing that out there, that's a little update that I think uh, some of you guys might appreciate. So let me go uh, really quickly into invasions. I'm going to cover a couple other things. Um, again, there's not a lot of changes, I think, to the game this season, um, but I'm just going to go over a couple things. So one of the biggest things for invasion mode is that ornate keys, which are the keys that you need to uh, open up chests. These are now going to be um, key items that drop from specific fights. So you can't buy these keys anymore from uh, shops, and there's... A limited number of keys now uh, there's not like you can't just stockpile keys and you know do whatever with them there's a limited number of keys they drop from specific stages um, and there's about as many keys as there are chests I've already beaten all of the Misa's 100% I spent all last night doing that so um, I've already finished that I went through all of them unlocked all the chests and I'm only left with one key and that's after doing all the stages all the optional stages everything so Unless I missed another chest somewhere, which I don't think I did because I've seen, I, I looked everywhere, I can see it says my completion status and all that. Um, I You should only be left with one key. Um, so you want to make sure, okay, I, I actually went through everything and did everything. What I'm going to suggest for you guys though, save your keys for the most important chests. And I'm going to show you guys 
um, as you know, later on in the video, there's going to be chapters. You guys can use the chapters to, to look at that if you want to. Um, but what I would suggest, save your keys for the important chests. And then if you want to do cleanup afterwards and go through and open up the rest of the chests, go ahead and do that. The reason I suggest that is because some of the stages that drop keys are really annoying. Really, really annoying. Um, for example, the, the mini games, um, you know, the blockbuster one where you have to hit the ball and it goes around and breaks the bricks. I hate that one. <laughs> I'm sure there's a trick uh, to doing that more efficiently, that those mini games. Um, but I always use Lime, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to do with her sometimes. But those ones drop keys. Um, and so if you don't want to have to do those to make sure you have all the keys to unlock all the chests, save your keys initially and then check out later on in the video all uh, where it says the uh, the talismans and the relics and stuff like that. I'll mention uh, which ones to open to get the most efficient stuff and then you can go back and do some cleanup afterwards. Um, the only other uh, big change um, or not really a big change, but something that is more prevalent in this uh, season compared to previous ones. Um, last season, I think they introduced some of the bosses would drop like uh, relics. It might have even shown up in seasons before that, but I know last season had a Liu Kang one. Um, some of the bosses would drop relics that would allow you to do like special moves, right? Um, that's a lot more uh, of a thing in this season. It's more guaranteed. All the invasion bosses now drop some kind of relic that gives some characters new moves. Um, these are usually for fun, and let me go, I'll show you guys really quickly. So I have one equipped to Lee Mei right now, and you can see uh, enables flying punch, and this, this can only be equipped to Lee Mei. There's other ones here, uh, Ashra uh, can only be equipped to Ashra, increases maximum number of sins, increases damage of sins, sins do not expire. We have Havoc here, uh, constantly regenerate health, but you're confused. Um, and then we have uh, Johnny Cage, you build hype instantly and the hype lasts longer. This one's pretty cool. Uh, for Katana, um, it allows you to perform Melina's role. <laughs> and then uh, for Sub-Zero, the Ice Slam, and I think you have the backflip kick for Scorpion. That might be it. These might be all of them. Um, but basically all the invasion bosses dropped a relic like this. Um, I'll show you guys really quickly how to use them. Uh, let me go over to this stage over here. I have the one for Lee Mei equipped right now. So I'll show you how this works. Um, Fight. So first, wait until you can actually move, because I noticed if you open the, the move list before you can control your character, uh, I guess the relic doesn't kick in yet, so it doesn't show up in your move list. So wait until you can move, then go to special moves. Uh, go down to equip special moves, and we can see here now we have flying punch. Uh, there's also enhanced flying punch, uh, which costs one bar of super meter. Um, I'll see if I can show you guys without killing him. <laughs> so you can see, um, pretty crazy. And the reason it did so much damage is because he's only level one. Uh, I'll just ret return to the map to skip that um so you guys can see you can do those really kind of like funny moves um they don't seem powerful enough to me to replace other more important relics and setups that i'm going to show you guys later um maybe there's a trick to them that allows you to really break the game i haven't really noticed anything um so i think it's more just for fun but it's a cool little addition and you guys can uh you know play around with that as you go through invasion mode um other than that, let me just quickly say, um, as a quick uh, start off um, warning to you guys, if you're going to be doing invasion mode, okay, and you want to make sure you get the most out of currency and um, experience and all that stuff, make sure to start like directly into invasion mode and start invasion mode and go through invasion mode. Because here's the problem. If you go to the Towers of Time first and you gain levels in the Towers of Time and then you come back to invasion mode and you start invasion mode, Invasion mode is split up so that the Misas are um, are specific levels, right? So you can see in this uh, area, like a lot of these stages are level one. Um, as we go through, we're going to be seeing, you know, different Misas with higher level stages. But if you're already above the recommended level for a stage, you're going to be getting less rewards. You're going to get less currency. You're going to get less experience. Um, the game, because of the way like reward scaling works, it's going to screw you over if you've already gained levels before you come into invasion mode and actually start invasion mode. So I know a lot of you are going to want to jump into like uh, even just like the ghost face stuff. 
Um, just a quick warning, like, because there's going to be uh, ghost face towers, um, event towers, where you can get, like, uh, combat cards and stuff. So just a quick warning. If you do that and you gain, like, a level or two and then come back here, you're going to be noticing you're going to be making slightly less rewards than if you'd come in at, like, level zero. Um, it kind of sucks. It's the way scaling works. Um, there's not really much you can do about it. Um, other than just starting invasion mode first. So that's just a quick warning. I'm letting you guys know about that. Um, another thing I suggest, do all the fight stages that you can. Now, obviously, as you're going through invasion mode, there's a lot of other stages. There's mini games, there's survival stages, character trials, all that stuff. If you want to skip those, go ahead. Um, a lot of them only uh, award things like herbs and boosters. Those, to me, are still extremely important, okay? But if it's something that you really you don't want to handle and you're pulling your hair out trying to finish some of them, you can skip them if you want to. They're optional stuff, uh, optional fights. Um, but uh, the actual, like, any any stage that's an actual, like, uh, like, encounter, like an actual fight against another opponent, those ones are really important because those ones actually, they will give you first-time victory experience, which is pretty substantial. I know a lot of you guys are going to be using this guide to uh, get your characters mastered, your fighters, your cameos mastered so that you can get dragon crystals and things like that um, and brutalities and all that good stuff. So if you want to make this easier on yourself and you don't want to have to just like grind the, uh, you know, the hourly tower like I'm going to show you later, take your time going through invasion, do all the fights. It's going to allow you to see things, get different relics, get different talismans and stuff too. Um, it's important and you guys have two months. I mean, this thing goes on for like 62 days, I think, or something like that. Um, you guys have two months to finish this. You don't have to rush through it. And the problem with rushing through it is that I noticed then afterwards, I'll get a lot of comments from people saying like, oh, hey, I'm doing the seasonal tower and, you know, I'm at level 35 and I'm getting one shotted by modifiers and blah, blah, blah. The reason for that is because probably I'm not going to, I'm not going to call people out and say you're absolutely doing this, but I'm just saying one of the main reasons for that is because you're probably rushing through, <clears throat> um, invasion mode and you're not leveling up uh, your character's stats uh, the way that you should if you actually take your time and go through. And I don't mean just necessarily invasion level. Um, we can see if I open up the menu here. So we have the invasion level. I'm level 30. But look at the stats. Look at my stats. Now, invasion level 30 will not give you these stats, okay? It'll give you good stats, but not this high. The way you get stats this high, and I'm going to be going even higher, and I'll explain that later. Um, I haven't done it yet because I, I wanted to get this video out for you guys. Um, but um, the reason my stats are so high, just baseline, um, is because I take my time, I go through all the invasion stuff, and guys, invasion started yesterday. I've already 100%ed it. So it's not like it's going to be like a huge ordeal. There's not really a big deal in taking your time and going through and making sure that you do everything you can. Um, because you're going to be getting a lot more uh, boosters, uh, a lot more herbs, which boost your stats permanently for whatever character you use them on. Um, it's super important. It's going to make a huge difference going into later stages in invasion mode. It's going to make a massive difference going into the seasonal tower, which I'll explain later. But this is really important. You guys want to make sure that you take your time to level up your character because it's more than just invasion level. Invasion level is still important. It caps out at 30, uh, and that's still really important, but you want to make sure you do everything you can because you get more benefits out of it. Um, and not only that, I mean, some of the survival stages actually teach you how to deal with like some of the boss attacks because some of the survival stages are actually the invasion boss attacks, but like miniature versions of them. So it'll have you do that, and then it'll send you to the boss, and he'll have the exact same attack. So if you've already practiced it, you're going to have an easier time dealing with those attacks. Um, so anyway, that's that's my start off. Um, give me a second. I'm going to check my list here. Okay, so what we're going to go into now, we're going to go into the clues. Uh, each Misa uh, this season has one clue stage, uh, which uh, I'm on one right now. You can see here it says, um, well, it's kind of messed up, but it, it spells out destroy the world. Um, and then that leads to a treasure chest. They usually do. Um, so all of these, what you have to do, you have to go into the stage, um, figure out the clue. So this one says destroy the world. What does that mean? Well, it's Cyrax's, uh, the cameo Cyrax fatality because he actually, he blows up the world in his fatality. So what you do is you go into the stage, you do, uh, cameo Cyrax's fatality. Uh, and then when you come back here, it'll, there's usually like a barrier right here. 
um, it'll break the barrier, allowing you to go over to the treasure chest, and then you can get your rewards. So every Misa has one of these uh, this season, um, which is one of the things I, I appreciate. It used to be some of them had like a couple, and they were like really convoluted, trying to like you know figure out what exactly the answers were. Uh, these ones, luckily, I didn't have much trouble figuring them out. So I'm going to go over all the clues. Uh, I've already, I think, set myself up in all the Misas, so I'm going to go over all the clues really quickly. So this one. This is uh, Fengjiang Village. Uh, this is the first Misa. So this is Destroy the World. Um, let me see if I can see it. There we go. Destroy the World. Uh, this is Cyrax, uh, the cameo fatality for Cyrax. And this will give you, when you go down here and open up this treasure chest, um, this is going to give you the uh, Orbital bleh, <laughs> orbital Strike Talisman, uh, which I think is this one here. Um, so it's a, it's a low level talisman, uh, but this one is what you get from this chest. Um, so that's the first one. Let me go over, we'll move on to, I'll show you guys all the clues, uh, really quickly. So if you're struggling with one, uh, you can see what they are. So in the, uh, Sundo Festival, um, let me open up the map. I'll show you guys where it is. It's right here. I'll go back and show you the other one after. Um, but this is the map. So this one right here. The clue is toasty. Uh, this is going to be cameo scorpions fatality. And this will give you the the Omnom Namitron Talisman, uh, which let me see. I've got a whole bunch here, so let me just see. Here we go. Um, so this is the Omnom Namitron Talisman, level 9. Uh, seems like a healing talisman with only one charge, though, so I haven't used that. Um, so let's see Sundo Festival. Let me just really quickly go back. I'll show you guys um, Fengjian Village uh, on the map. I'll try to remember to open the map for you guys so you can see where these things are. Um, so this is pretty close, I think, to the uh, beginning. It's literally the first path. So that's that. Um, we'll go over to the Tarkatan Colony. So this one is uh, flipping out. I'll show you guys where this one is. It's right in the middle here. Um, so this one, you're just going to want to spam the flip stance uh, by pressing L2, or the left trigger. Um, spam it like 10, 15, maybe 20 times during the match. Um, when you beat the match, then it'll break the, uh, the barrier. Um, you'll then go up here and uh, be able to get that treasure chest, which is going to give you the Malignant Mangler's Talisman. And I'll, I'll talk about this one after because this one... I'm going to mention this a little bit later. Um, you can turn this into a, a useful talisman, uh, which I haven't done yet, but I'm going to do it later. Uh, but I'll explain why this one is probably going to be useful for you guys. Um, so you get this one if you do that. And then let's go down to Shang Tsung's laboratory. So this one here, uh, this, is, uh, this spells out heart attack. And this is on the second floor, um, pretty close to the entrance to the second floor. Um, this is going to be Kano's um, cameo fatality. And it's going to give you the unlimited power talisman uh, when you open up the chest over here. All of these, when I say it's going to give you something, it's, it's always the chest that it's, uh, it's blocking. So it's going to give you the unlimited power talisman. I'll show you guys that one. Uh... Here we go. So it does a lot of damage, but this isn't, uh, in my opinion, uh, the best talisman <laughs> this season. There aren't really, I will say really quickly, there aren't going to be any best talismans, but I do have a, a combo I will suggest for you guys, which I think is going to help you along uh, unless you want to you know, make your own talisman. So it'll give you that. And then next up is going to be the Living Forest. Uh, so this one is Inner Demon. Uh, it spells out Inner Demon. This is over here, pretty close to the entrance. Um, over here at the top. And uh, so this is going to be Serena's Cameo Fatality. Lots of Cameo Fatalities uh, for, these, uh, for these clues this season. So this is going to be Serena's Cameo Fatality. Uh, this is going to give you, when you go to the chest, it's going to give you the uh, Magical Skull Talisman. Uh, which, 
here we go this one here so it shoots 28 28 projectiles these ones are kind of fun they never really do that much damage in my opinion not unless you decide to uh customize it a little bit but they're fun to have um so that and then i think the last one so that's gonna be fire temple uh next Um, so this spells out hat trick and uh, this is going to be Kung, the Kung Lao cameo fatality um, and you're going to be getting the dark skull talisman as an award um, for the chest so that's this one so it's kind of similar to the magical skull talisman uh, this one does 34 projectiles and uh, it's a higher level level 29 I think this is one of the highest this one's the highest I think uh, comes from the invasion boss, uh, final invasion boss. But uh, this one's pretty cool. Again, you just end up shooting a bunch of projectiles. Um, I don't consider it to be the best talisman uh, that you can get for free. I think it's just a fun one. Um, but yeah, that's basically going to be that. You're going to do that clue, break the barrier, and that'll you'll get that talisman from that chest there. So that covers the clues. Um, next up, I'm going to uh, cover shops. Um, because there are some pretty important shops uh, in this uh, season, kind of like last season. So let me go back to Dengjian Village. And really quickly, I'm going to show you guys how to um, swap between shops. So as soon as you visited a shop or a forge, you can click on shop here in the menu. And it'll take you to one, okay? If you immediately open your menu again and click it again... It'll take you to the next one, but it'll only take you to ones that you've actually uh, already encountered. So go across the map, find them all, um, and you can keep swapping between them. It'll take you <laughs> to the one. So some of these Mises only have uh, two shops. Some of them have three. Um, the extra shop being a special shop because all of the Mises have one shop that you can buy um, elemental buff consumables. I think this might be... Yeah, okay, so here, all the elements for each Misa are different. So this one has, uh, it looks like magic uh, buffs. So you can buy um, items that give you uh, magic armor for an encounter, uh, or buff magic attack, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so every Misa has one elemental buff consumable shop. Um, the other shop, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. So the other shop is going to be um, either a talisman component or a talisman catalyst shop and the difference between components and catalysts components are used to buff a talisman catalysts are used to uh create a talisman and you see you can buy these empty talismans here these unforged talismans so when you're trying to create a talisman um you can use these items here um so it makes uh, oh no sorry these are um these ones are components these aren't catalysts um so i'll show you afterwards the catalyst one but um so these ones will actually buff so if you want to give a talisman more charges more damage um more healing when you use it that kind of thing you can use these these are components um i think the only uh mises that have component talisman shops are uh fengjian village sundo festival and living forest the shops that have or the mises that have um catalyst shops are Tarkatan Colony, Shang Tsung's Laboratory, and Fire Temple. And they're all going to have different inventory. So if you're looking for specific components, such as, um, you know, you want to add charges to a talisman or you want to add damage to a talisman, you're probably not going to find them all in one shop. You're going to have to go to the different shops and check them out, buy whatever from them. I think most of them sell five. You can buy five at a time. And then all the shops reset every hour. So once you've bought five, of a, of a certain um, component or catalyst, you then have to wait an hour to then come back and buy more if you want more. So I'll show you guys, um, that was the component shop. I'll show you guys what a catalyst shop looks like. Um, so the first one would be at Tarkatan Colony. So let me just skip over. One of these is gonna be the Okay, so this is the elemental buff. So I think this one is the catalyst shop. There we go. So these you can see. So used with ca um, with catalysts to create ball talismans, 
uh, create meteor talismans, armor talismans. So these are what you use. This will determine what the talisman, the unforged talisman is. So if you want to make a meteor talisman, you can use this with this uh, when you're forging a talisman and other uh, other catalysts and things like that as well to then create if you want to make like a specific like a fire meteor talisman that's these are the kind of things you'd be using to do that um, i'm not going to get just just to give you guys a heads up i'm not going to get into creating talismans um, myself in these videos because that's a very i find it's a very personal thing everyone's you know the amount of crowns they have um, the amount of items they already have it's all going to be different for people as they go through um, invasion mode so the reason I don't talk about creating talismans is because um, it's kind of, it's more personalized thing. Uh, it's going to be different for everybody. And I like to cover the stuff that is more guaranteed for everyone. Um, so I'm going to be showing talismans you can get from chests and then how to alter those a little bit if you want to. But I'm not going to get into creating talismans from scratch. That's a whole other, a whole other thing. Um, so yeah, that's basically the catalyst. That's what they're for. Um, there's three, or I'll say four. There's four other shops um, that are special shops in um, this season. So if you go to the first one, um, I'm going to start with this one because this one you can access without having to beat the final invasion boss. So this is a special consumables shop. Um, and I think, let me see here. Uh, is it this one? No, okay, so that's the buffs. I think this is going to be the catalysts. Yeah. Okay, so this one here, uh, this is going to be the um, special components. Or consumables, sorry, not components, consumables. Um, these are the, this is a special consumable shop. So usually like, or not usually, but back in the old seasons, you were able to find at least one shop that would always sell kind of things like this, like little items here and there that would refresh every hour. This is now the only shop that actually, um, well, other than Towers of Time shop, which we'll get into, but mainly this is the only shop that just sells purely consumables um, that you can use to kind of like help yourself in certain encounters um so this for example um is a resurrection item allows you to resurrect if you die during a tower or an encounter um this one same thing extra life you have this one unlocks a secret fight guaranteed if you use it before a stage um so things like this and this one might actually be important for you guys you're immune to projectiles this can be used to kind of like break certain survival um, stages, anything that like throws projectiles at you and you kind of have to just not die, you can use this. I mean, it costs a whole bunch of crowns, but you can use this and it should keep you alive throughout the stage uh, because a lot of the survival stuff counts as projectiles. Um, so they would just kind of go right through you and wouldn't even affect you. Um, so that's the, the special consumable shop. Uh, this is in the fire temple and I'll show you guys where it is. It's right here on the map. So, um, this is the special fire temple um, cons cons consumables shop. The next one, um, these ones, these next two are going to be ones that you can't access unless you have beaten the final invasion boss because you need to have the key item uh, to break the, those special gates you guys are going to be seeing around the, the Misa maps. Um, you need that key item to access these uh, these two shops, and there's a reason for that. I'll show you guys what they are. So the first one is going to be the potion shop. This is in the Tarkatan colony. So let's uh, we'll skip over to it. And I think this is it. So let me open up the map. You guys can see. So this is going to be the potion shop, and the reason you can't access this right away is because. This is going to be, you're going to see like a fire gate here initially when you first reach this area. You need to beat the final invasion boss. You're going to get a key item, uh, which I can actually, I think I can show you, uh, should be down here. The nether stone. Um, so the nether stone, you get this for beating the final invasion boss. You can then come back here and to be fair, all the Mises have a barrier section that you can't access until you've beaten the final invasion boss. You can come here, use the item. It'll break the barrier. Come up here. And you can access this potion shop. Um, and this is really, this is going to be really useful for you guys. Not as much as other things I'll mention right after this, but it's still going to be very useful for you guys for specific fights. If you're up against, like, let's say you're up against a boss, you just cannot beat for whatever reason with your current stats. Um, and you just want a quick fix. 
you can use these potions. This, for example, doubles your attack stat. This doubles your health stat. This one's the most important. Uh, obviously, it costs the most. It doubles all your stats, but it only doubles them for one, uh, one match or one tower. So if you use this before a tower, like for example, a seasonal tower level, the effect should last throughout every fight in that tower. Otherwise, if you're doing single stages, it'll only work for one stage. And it makes a massive difference. I mean, you saw I have 200 attack right now. I think over 200 attack. If I were to use this, I would have something like 400 attack, which is ridiculous. I'd be one-shotting everything. Um, so these are these are expensive, but they're really good if you guys are just you're hitting a wall. You just want to get past it. You don't want to spend time grinding other stuff. You can use these potions um, in order to uh, to do that. Um, I am going to mention really quickly, guys, um, for things that need crowns, I'm going to get into uh, later. You guys will see in the grinding section I'll mention later how to get crowns pretty easily if you guys need to grind crowns so that you can buy this stuff. I'll mention how to do that afterwards, so don't worry, we're going to get into that. So that's the potion shop. That's in the Tarkatan colony. Um, the next shop is going to be a special relic shop, which is uh, in the Living Forest. Again, this needs you to have the key item from beating the final invasion boss. You can't access this until you've done that. So I'm going to go use the shop. I think it's up here. Not this one. Here we go. This guy. Let me open up the map so you guys can see it's pretty close to the end of the map. Um, over down on the bottom right corner there. Now this shop, the reason this shop is unique is because this shop doesn't restock. This shop has a single inventory and once you've bought something from him, it's gone, that's it, you own it. So don't, make sure you don't buy something from him and then accidentally discard it because you're not going to be able to get it again. He's not going to restock and allow you to buy it again. Um, I've already bought two things here, which I'm going to get into afterwards when I talk about relics. Uh, important relics that I think you guys are going to want to use, but he sells special items here um, that pretty powerful relics. I mean, this one breaks uh, or this one turns off damage scaling. This one also turns off damage scaling, and I find this one to be better. Um, this one is good, I guess, if you're trying to block all match. <laughs> it can reflect back um, damage. Um, it can also heal you, but this one, I tried it out. It's not as good as my setup that I'm going to be talking about later. But anyway, this uh, so there's also this shop, this special relic shop uh, that you can access in the Living Forest Mesa. Again, you need to have the final invasion boss item to be able to access this because down here, um, you're going to see there's the, uh, the gate that is going to block you from coming up here otherwise. I think it's like right here. Yeah, there we go. So this usually there'd be a fire gate there. You can't access this until you've beaten the final invasion boss and broken the gate. And then the last one I'm going to mention, uh, if you go to the Towers of Time, there is a shop here. Uh, you're going to notice at the bottom left, uh, it says L2 for shop, R2 for, for, for forge. So if you press L2, um, this shop refreshes every hour and has new stuff. So it's not going to be refreshing the same stuff. And it sells a little bit of everything. You can get, uh, it always refreshes a few relics. So you guys can see some relics here. Um, it has some consumables and it has some uh, components and I think some catalysts as well. Yeah, here we go. So this shop has a little bit of everything. Again, this refreshes every hour. If you're looking for a specific catalyst that maybe isn't in this season otherwise, check this shop because he might, maybe he'll have it. Maybe these are all random items. Um, it's very possible it might be here uh, so you guys can check it out. Um. All right, so having covered that, uh, let me see what else. That's the shops. Now I'm going to get into the nitty gritty. I know a lot of you guys are wondering, okay, well, what talisman should I be using? What relic should I be using this season to help me grind, to help me through the seasonal tower? Let's start off with talismans. Um, I have two suggestions, what, one real suggestion and then another suggestion for like an extra little thing. Um, so let me go over talismans real quick. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the Tarkatan colony. And I'm actually just going to have a drink, guys. Give me just one second. Okay, sorry about that. So, uh, let me see. So from here, I think... Let me go down here. Um... Right, I think that's closer. So if we go, I'll just go all the way down here. You guys can see. 
I'll show you basically where this talisman is, and then I'll explain why I think it's probably the best free talisman this season. Okay, so is it... no, one more. So you're gonna go down here. Make your way up here. And so this chest here, um, I believe this is going to need a key for you to open. Um, this chest here is going to have the Ice Meteor Storm Talisman, and that's the one that I have equipped right now. Let me show you guys. So it doesn't, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't look that amazing. I know that. It's a level 12 talisman, which already is like, what the hell? 750% damage. That's not bad. Let me just throw that out there. It's an Ice Meteor Talisman though, so it will freeze enemies, and there's a reason I'm going to be suggesting this one. Part of it is because it freezes enemies. Um, that's going to cause a lot of interruptions against high level enemies when they're in the middle of combos and things like that. It's going to interrupt them. It's going to stun them, uh, freeze them so that you can continue doing damage. Um, this one I think is a great support talisman as well as the extra damage that it does. Not only that, you can upgrade it. Um, Make sure, if you're going to be upgrading any of these talismans that I'm going to be showing you here, make sure that you have uh, Dragon Blood because you don't want to break the talisman. So for this talisman, if you wanted to add charges to it, um, add uh, recharge uh, recharges to it so that it recharges faster um, after a match, then you can do that. But make sure that you have Dragon Blood so that when you do it, um, it doesn't break the talisman. You want to make sure that it's guaranteed when you're forging the upgrade um, because you don't want to risk breaking it. <clears throat> That's actually really important. Um, so this is the Ice Meteor Storm Talisman. So that's one of them. And the other one, uh, funny enough, I've already shown you guys, was the uh, Malignant Manglers Talisman. And I'll show you guys again uh, where it is. And let me just actually, I'll open my map here so you guys can see again, just in case. So this is where the Ice Meteor Storm Talisman is. And there's a trick. Uh, there's a really important trick to the Ice Meteor Storm Talisman, which I'll show you guys after. Um, which is going to be a reason that it's actually as strong as it is. Okay, so I think if we go down here... Is this the flipping out? Right, okay, so before I mention the flipping out clue, and then you do that, you come up here, you open this chest, you're going to get the Malignant Manglers <clears throat> Talisman. The reason this one I also think is important is because I always like to have a talisman that I can swap in to just focus on healing. Um, focus on healing me or um, increasing my meter. Something where I'm not too worried about doing damage because sometimes there's going to be challenges where it's like make sure that you finish the fight with a certain amount of health. Or maybe I'm fighting a boss and I just want to make sure that I can heal throughout the phases and not die. The reason I'm suggesting using this one as like a base for that is because it starts off with, I think, what is that, seven charges? Um, if you take this talisman and then use this talisman as a base, upgrade it with the healing uh, perk, the healing component, um, and the meter gain component, um, you can use this as a great um, healing talisman. Uh, make sure to also add um, recharge to it, so uh, at the end of fights, it'll gain some charges back. Um, but this is a great suggestion, I think, for um, a base because it's got so many charges right away, so you don't have to worry about adding charges to it. Um, so this, I think, is a good base for a healing talisman. I always like to have one of these and then like one that I use for actual damage uh, and support um, in fights if I'm struggling. So I think both of these are good base talismans to use, and then you can upgrade them as you see fit. But again, make sure you use Dragon Blood. I'll get into Dragon Blood after. Um, you can get Dragon Blood from the Seasonal Tower. Um, but make sure to use that. Make sure that it's guaranteed when you're upgrading these talismans because you don't want to break them. Uh, if you're going to risk breaking them, I would say don't even bother and uh, just stick with what they are for now. And then once you have more Dragon Blood, come back and do whatever you want to do with them. Um... I know that a lot of players are going to create their own talismans. Um, these are just suggestions, like I mentioned before. 
These aren't going to be the end-all be-all to talismans this season, but we don't have anything like the Windbreaker, which to be fair, they kind of nerfed it anyway, it's not that great. Um, we don't have um, the same Meteor Talisman as last season, things like that. So I would say again, I'm just showing you guys the free Talismans that I think can, ke can keep you going. The great thing about this Ice Meteor Storm Talisman too is that it can be picked up early on. Uh, this is only the third Misa, which means you can use this for later stages, later invasion bosses. You don't have to worry about beating the final invasion boss before you get this talisman. And uh, again, you can upgrade it, add more damage to it, add more charges to it. And I think it would really help you guys out. I'm going to show you why, part of the reason why I think this talisman also is really useful. Um, let me go to the final boss. I'm actually going to swap my relic out as well, uh, which I'll be getting into relics right after this. So don't worry about that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the final invasion boss because that's a longer match and I'll show you guys a trick with this talisman, um, which I think works with all meteor talismans, quite frankly. I think it's a glitch. I think it's something they haven't either noticed or haven't bothered to fix yet, but it's something that we've taken advantage of in previous seasons and I'm going to show you guys why um, I think this is, uh, this is important. So let me go down here. We're going to go to the final invasion boss. So we're going to go fight Scorpion. Okay, so I'm going to start this fight. Now, I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown of what I'm going to do. The way this talisman works, and again, this is the Ice Meteor Storm Talisman, okay? The one I showed you guys just before. The way this talisman works, you have to hold up on the right analog stick. So push the right analog stick up. Don't push it, like, down. Don't press it. Hold the right analog stick up. Um, you're going to see your character hold the talisman above their head. Keep it there. Keep holding the up, uh, the analog stick up until you're knocked out of that animation. So either you're knocked down or you're knocked back. Like when you see your character get knocked out of like holding the talisman above their head, that's when you want to let go of the analog stick. If you let go of the analog stick before that, the reason you don't want to do that is because it's the effect will stop immediately. If you wait until you're knocked out of the animation, the effect will last indefinitely throughout the entire fight. So you're going to see meteors falling the whole fight. It'll fall between rounds. So you only need to use one charge and you'll have meteors falling the whole round that are going to be doing damage and freezing the opponent. And against multi-round fights like bosses, it lasts all the rounds. You don't have to use the talisman again. And in fact, don't use the talisman again because if you do when the effect is currently working it's going to cancel the effect so i'm going to show you guys how it works we're going to boot into this fight <clears throat> Liu Kang. so i'm going to hold it over my head and just hold it there until you're knocked out now you're going to see the talus the um, meteors are going to continue falling And you can see it's breaking him out of a lot of combos, a lot of attacks. So it's giving me an opportunity to get a lot more damage in, um, saving me from taking a lot of damage as well. And you can see now round two has started, and the meteors are still falling. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. So this fight, I think, has three or four rounds. We're going to see the meteors are going to fall throughout the entire fight. And I'm just going to block this. I'm still taking damage, but it's not a big deal.
there you go. That's the big reason I think that that talisman is probably one of the best free ones um, that you guys can get. Um, again, especially if you decide to upgrade it with new charges, um, recharges, more damage, that kind of thing. And it's going to go really well with the relic I'm going to show you guys right after this. Um, because um, you guys are going to see the, the effect of the relic benefits that talisman quite a bit. <clears throat> so I think that's basically it for the talismans. I've shown you guys how it works. Um, now we're going to do relics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a relic you get pretty early on. This isn't going to be an amazing relic. This isn't going to be the relic you're going to be using like for seasonal tower or anything like that. It's just a quick relic because there aren't very many amazing relics uh, this time around. But uh, I'm going to show you this one. So if you go to... Oops, sorry. Uh, if we go to... Let me see here. We're going to try to go up here. So this is closer to the end of the... Of the Misa. We're going to go over this way. And I think it's this treasure chest here. So this one here. And I'll open up the map. You guys can see where this is. Uh, so it's right on the right there, right near the end of the uh, Misa. This will drop the Slippy Relic. And I'm going to show you guys... <clears throat> so this one here. So you have a 25% chance to escape throws. And a 15% chance to auto-break combos for free. This doesn't sound amazing. It's not like it adds a ton of damage or anything like that. It doesn't break the game. But until you get the next Relic I'm going to show you guys. Um, this one, the reason this helps so much is... Pretty much specifically because of the fact that it auto breaks combos and it activates a lot. I mean, 15 for 15% is actually pretty high. You guys are going to notice when you're fighting invasion bosses and stuff, a lot of them, they're going to maybe get you into a combo and this relic will help you survive because it'll break the combo for free. Most of the time, um, I found it kicked in quite a bit. So this is my suggestion for like an early relic. That's pretty easy to get. You guys don't have to jump through any hoops to get this. Um, and that's in the, the Sundo Festival map. And again, it's right here near the end of the map in this treasure chest. Um, the one that I think you guys are going to like for Seasonal Tower and grinding and other things and things like that. Um, this is going to be in the Living Forest. So let me go back to the Living Forest. We're going to go to the shop I showed you. The one that sells these special relics that you can only buy once. So we're going to go to the to the shop here. And this relic, the reason I think this relic is the best one that you can get pretty easily, zero to death, is because your combos no longer scale damage. You start the fight with full meter. The only downside is you don't earn any invasion XP. Invasion XP does not mean that you're not going to be earning fighter or cameo XP. You'll still be able to grind level up your fighters and level up your cameos. What this means is that if you're not invasion level 30 yet, when you do other stages, you're not going to be getting invasion experience. So you won't be able to level up your invasion level. So make sure you're invasion level 30 before you equip this relic. Um, because invasion level 30 is the max invasion level. So get that out of the way first, get to invasion level 30. Then you can come here and buy this relic. Um, it costs 10,000 crowns. I'll show you guys after. Don't worry. I'm going to show you guys a way to get crowns. Um, but um, it costs 10,000 crowns. And the fact that it removes damage scaling is huge. It basically means that all of your hits are going to be doing full damage no matter how long your combo is going. And when you combine this with the ice talisman that I just showed you guys, it's really good because the ice is going to freeze them. But you won't have to worry about the freezing aspect causing some really serious scaling when you start combos while they're frozen. So it's going to be freezing them. You're going to be able to start combos and do really nasty combos. Maybe it'll freeze them again mid combo so you can start another combo. It's going to be pretty ridiculous. This is why I think that this relic and the ice talisman go so well together. Not only that, you guys are going to notice when your stats are high enough, um, the fact that this removes damage scaling, your combos are going to be doing insane damage. Like I'm talking like in the thousands, I've done a combo that's like 7,000 damage before using this relic. It's pretty disgusting. So this is my suggestion. And again, you guys can access this. This is the living forest Misa. This is where, um, this 
uh, shop is you need to have the final invasion boss uh key item to be able to access this shop like i mentioned before um because you need to break the fire barrier here in the living forest mesa to be able to access this shop um so you can't get this relic until after you've already beaten invasion uh invasion mode and beaten the final invasion boss so that's why i'm showing you guys the slippy relic first so you guys can get that one and give yourselves a little bit of a boost, uh, you know, in terms of fighting. You can use any relic you want, really, but that's just my suggestion. Beat invasion mode, get that key item, come over here and buy this relic. This will not only increase your damage, just baseline a lot, but it'll also go really well with the Ice Talisman. And again, just make sure you're invasion level 30 first, because if you equip this relic and you're not invasion level 30, you're not going to be able to get any more invasion experience until you take the relic off. So do that first. Um, one thing I do, I will mention then, is with relics, you guys are going uh, to want to pay attention to your stats. So for this relic, for example, um, you can see requirements, 25 special. Now, obviously that's not a problem for me because my special stat is at 80, so she can equip this relic no problem. If you guys, let's say you have a character, they don't have... 25 special stats and you took all of your stat points and you put them into attack or defense or something like that so now you're stuck you can't equip the relic because you don't have enough um, special stat what you can do is you can actually go to the um, wushi academy um, go to the wushi academy misa and there's a shop here <clears throat> and he sells like invasion related um, items, special invasion related items. This one, you can gain an invasion level, things like that. The important one here though, is this white and then record refunds all of your stat points. Um, I'm pretty sure if you use this, it works for all characters. So if you use it on one character, I think it resets the stat points for all of them. I could be wrong about that. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but, um, basically, yeah, it allows you to, it refunds all your stat points. It allows you to reallocate them. So if there's a relic you want to equip and you screwed up your stats a little bit, because now you don't have enough stats put into a certain, um, you know, stat that needs, that you need for the relic, you can use this, refund your stat points, reallocate them so that you can equip the relic. Um, so that covers that. I'm going to give you guys some bad news. I know a lot of people, they check out these videos, they're hoping to see the Invincible Relic. Um, unfortunately, there is no Invincible Relic found, at least in the Invasion Misas this time around, this season. And I'm going to show you guys, all of these are 100%. Um, I've opened up all the chests, I've done all the stages. I did not get an Invincible Relic. That doesn't mean that you can't get an Invincible Relic this season, it just means that one isn't dropping guaranteed from regular invasion stages. Um, what you're going to have to probably just hope for is either when you go to the Towers of Time and check the shop, hope that one of these relics that kind of like restock, refreshes, ends up being an Invincible Relic. Or when you do the Seasonal Tower, I can't guarantee this, but last season I got a second Invincible Relic, exact same relic, just a second one, by doing the Seasonal Tower. I don't know if it was a random drop or if it was guaranteed at a certain level, but when I was going through the Seasonal Tower, I did get um, another Invincible Relic. <clears throat> so there is a chance you can get an Invincible Relic from the Seasonal Tower, but because I can't guarantee that, I'm showing you guys what I would use otherwise to really kind of like boost your damage, help you survive. Um, I think it's going to be really, still really useful for the um, for the seasonal tower, because the lack of combo scaling is going to allow you to do crazy damage um, for a lot of people, especially if you boost your stats. So that's the uh, that's me covering the relic section of everything. Um, there's a couple more things I'm going to touch on. We got a couple more things to go here. So I have a lot of people asking me how are your stats so high um and i have a lot of people saying like again i'm going to the seasonal tower i'm being one shot by modifiers and being one shot by enemies let me tell you guys right now especially with the fact that they added this last season the most important thing even more important than talismans even more important than relics is your stat points and there are stages you can go to they cost crowns to attempt but they drop guaranteed if you can beat the stage properly. 
They drop guaranteed full herbs. Full herbs, each one gives you five stat points to whatever stat that it's allocated to. Some like for, for the blue ones, it gives you defense. For the green ones, it gives you health. Um, these, I'm telling you right now, these stages, these full herb stages, grind these for like half an hour to an hour. Boost your stats. Last season, I boosted all of my stats past 100. Didn't even take that long. It took me like maybe like an hour and a half tops. Um, watching TV while I was like grinding them. Um, I boosted all my stats above 100. My attack stat at that point was like almost 300 and it made the seasonal tower way easier. And I didn't have to worry about having a broken talisman. I didn't have to worry about having a broken relic because just baseline, the enemies weren't really doing any damage to me and I was still doing a really good amount of damage. And Combine that with the fact that we have a relic that can uh, turn off damage scaling. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna make a huge difference, more so than I think anything else. So let me show you guys where to get these herbs. Um, I'm gonna start off. Um, there's two. There's there's several of these stages that you can't get to until you've beaten the final invasion boss. This is all gonna be now. You have to beat the final invasion boss to get to these stages. Um, I'm gonna show you one. First, I think is at the Sundo Festival. Um, so let me go to the Sundo Festival. I'll show you guys this one. So I think, okay, the easiest way to get to this is I'm going to go down. Down here seems like the easiest way, so <clears throat> let's go over here. So here, okay, you can see this This would have usually been a gate, uh, one of those fire gates that I was telling you about. I've already broken it, so you can't access this until you've beaten the final invasion boss, so you have to do that first. So you do that, you can then go over here and go up here. And these, I'm going to show you the two that I think are important, because there's one, I think, of these stages that gives you um, withered uh, herbs. We don't care about those because those only give you two stat points, I think. We want the full herbs. So these ones, the two that I'm going to show you, give you full herbs, which give you five stat points each. There's two types. One is Fatal Combat, which is this one. Um, the other one is, I think, Animal Combat is what they call it. This one, you're going to have to finish the fight with a fatality that it's going to tell you. It's going to tell you which fatality it wants you to do. Um, so you have to win the fight and then do that fatality before the enemy recovers. Um, the animal one is the exact same thing, except you're going to have to do an animality instead of a fatality. Um, one thing that's kind of crappy about these stages, and I'm going to give you guys a warning. The stages are random, so it's gonna you're not going to be using the character that you go into the stage with. So you see I have Lime. <clears throat> these stages are going to make you use a random character. So... Even though this sucks, I'm telling you guys right now, what you should do is open up your menu, go to all of your characters, and allocate all of their stats. Put as many stats as you can into attack, um, obviously other than other stats that you might need for relics or something. Um, allocate all of their stats properly, because if you don't, having them in a level, um, invasion level 30 is not enough, in my opinion. They're, they're gonna be too weak. You wanna make sure that they are um, powerful enough to beat all of the characters that you're gonna be fighting. Sometimes you're gonna be up against Raiko, sometimes you're gonna be up against Garrus. You don't wanna be like struggling and taking forever to finish these fights. Take your time, um, go through all of the characters one by one, allocate their stats, put as many stats into attack as possible, so that when you do these stages, no matter which character it starts you off with, you can still beat the stage really quickly. Um, again, at the end of the fight, it's going to make you do a fatality. Um, if you don't do it quickly enough, the fighter or the opponent is going to get all their health back and you have to do the whole thing all over again. So keep that in mind. This is the Fatal Combat version. I'll show you guys the other one. <clears throat> so if you go to, I think Shang Tsung's Laboratory is the other one. So, this one, I think we're going to have to just go downstairs. So, let's go over here. Um, this one, again, you need, the, uh, you need the key item from the final invasion boss. Uh, you have to break a barrier to access the stage. 
so we're gonna go up here this is now the first floor so right at the beginning of Shang Tsung's laboratory and you're just gonna go straight up you're gonna break the barrier you're gonna go straight up from here you're gonna see animal combat again this is the exact same thing as the fatal combat except you're doing animalities instead of fatalities it doesn't make any difference to the rewards um you will still get the full herb that gives you five stat points um these stages cost 500 crowns to attempt if you do it and you screw it up uh or you die or something you don't get those crowns back so make sure that you have the crowns come in here do this you're also going to be awarded crowns at the end of this so it doesn't really cost 500 because you get a little bit back um but these all of these things i'm going to show you with the full herbs and the full boosters they do cost crowns to attempt so make sure that you have crowns before you do these but i'm telling you right now guys grind these stages do this for half an hour to an hour the amount of stat points you're going to have at the end of it and the the boost you're going to get to your character's strength is more important than any talisman or any relic that you can equip i'm telling you that right now um these are very important so focus on these before especially if you're going to be doing the seasonal tower do these and i promise you won't have any trouble with getting one shotted or anything like that you guys saw when i was fighting the the invasion boss the last invasion boss how little damage i was taking from his like uh super attack with the wires or the uh, harpoons and all that stuff i was barely taking any damage that was because my stats are high and i'm going to be grinding this to get all of my stats above 100 before i attempt the seasonal tower um, because i know that i'm going to need that boost so the biggest thing i can say guys if you're wondering you know i'm struggling what do i do take on these stages and grind out for full herbs and boost your stats remember that all of these items though the full herbs the full boosters they only work on the character that you're using them on so right now i have lee may equipped if i use the blue herb which gives you five defense points um if i use it on right now with her equipped it'll only give her five defense points it won't give anyone else in the roster five defense points it's not like invasion levels where everybody gets stat points um the herbs and the boosters only work on your main character that you currently have equipped so if there's a character you're going to be using for seasonal tower or anything like that make sure that you equip them and have them on the main map before you use those items so that they're the ones who get the boost. Um, that's really the most important thing. So that covers that. I'm gonna show you guys the full booster. These are for herbs, so this boosts your, uh, your stats, um, like your main stats, like attack and special and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you guys the booster stage. Um, this one's kind of funny and I'll explain why in just a second, but we're gonna go back to the living forest. <clears throat> And we're gonna go down here. Uh, this, okay, you guys can see, this is the shop I was showing you before. Um, we're gonna go down here. Again, you need to have the final invasion boss's um, key item to get here. You need to be able to break the barrier. <clears throat> and you can see here, this is major malfunction random. This is gonna be a little bit different because this, you will actually use the character you have equipped. So whenever I do this, I have Lee Mei equipped right now. Um, she's going to be the one who's going to be doing this stage this stage is insanely easy if you put as many stat points as you can into attack and if you have the no scaling relic that i showed you guys before if you have this equipped guys the stage is going to be insanely simple you can do probably the most basic combo you guys know and still beat this stage it doesn't matter whether you're put up against like a like a dark robot a chaos robot a blood robot whatever it doesn't matter you're probably not going to have a problem with this. What's funny about this, I think they screwed something up. This one gives you a full booster, which increases your um, resistance. The boosters increase your resistance to elements. So if you're weak to ice or something, you use an ice booster, it'll increase your ice resistance. These booster stages, this one costs 250 crowns and gives you a full booster. There's another booster stage, which gives you a diluted booster, which only increases your resistance by 1%. I can't remember where the diluted booster stage is, but it costs 500. So I think they screwed something up in terms of the um, required crowns to do these. Um, I don't think my videos get enough viewers for them to notice that from what I said and change it. But it is something they might fix in the future. I'm just letting you know that right now. So it might not stay 250 crowns. But I'm going to show you how easy this is. 
using Lime with the Relic to turn off damage scaling. <laughs> so there you can see 7,000 damage. And we get a full booster out of it. And this is going to increase, uh, again, resistance by 5% for a certain element. You don't get to pick and choose which one you get, which is why I say just keep grinding these out. Um, eventually, you'll get all the important ones. You'll have everything kind of evened out. If you're trying to get like a certain resistance or a certain stat, <clears throat> to a certain point, you can keep doing these stages. Eventually, you'll get there, but you don't get to pick and choose, unfortunately. You just have to keep doing the stage. Um, so you could see how easy that was, especially with the relic that turns off uh, combo scaling. You just end up doing like insane damage to the robots. It doesn't really even matter what element the robot is or what element your character is. So that's it for the um, for the full boosters and the full herbs. Again, focus on those guys. That's more important than any talisman, any relic, um, for, especially if you're going to be doing the seasonal tower. All of this is like really good prep for the seasonal tower. So many of you are, I know, having trouble with getting one-shotted or not doing enough damage or fights taking forever. It's because you need to come here and do your full herbs to boost your attack and you know defense and things like that, and uh, the boosters to, to uh, boost your defense. Those are really important. So it's really good they added these stages um, last season. Um, these are returning from last season. So these, again, focus on these. It'll make things a lot easier. Um, now I'm going to go to the Towers of Time. We're almost done. Uh, I'm just going to cover the last few things. <clears throat> and actually, just give me one second here, guys. Okay, sorry about that. So, for the Towers of Time, let me just quickly explain, because um, I know there's going to be a lot of people who are um, probably wanting, who, they're you know, new players, maybe they don't know about the Towers of Time, shenanigans uh, in terms of the challenges and what the different towers do and stuff like that. So I'm going to quickly go over, they added, because um, this, this is a new look that was introduced last season for Towers of Time. When you open up your menu, you're going to get this. So the, you get three challenges. One's an easy, hard, and weekly challenge. The hard challenge changes daily. The easy challenge changes, I think, every hour. And the weekly challenge changes every week. <clears throat> the weekly challenge will always give you dragon crystals. So the only other way to get dragon crystals, if you guys don't want to pay for them, is to get them from um, mastering your characters. Uh, your I think your fighters, mastering your fighters, gives you dragon crystals. Um, and then these weekly challenges... If you can finish this, we'll also give you Dragon Crystals. So they've given us a way to get these premium costumes from the shop without having to actually spend real money. As long as you guys are willing to grind out, you know, certain aspects of the game to get these crystals for free. So I've already done the weekly challenge. You guys can see there it was just perform brutalities 30 times. Um, these challenges that you see here, they have to be done in the Towers of Time. So... If I go to the, you know, invasion mode and I'm in like, uh, I don't know, the Fire Temple Misa and I'm doing brutalities, that's not going to count for these challenges. You have to do these in one of these towers. Any of these towers doesn't really matter. It just has to be done in the Towers of Time for you to actually get the points uh, or the, uh, the credit for doing these challenges. On the right there, you can see there's a rank, top 5%. This, uh, this couple weeks is going to be a Ghost Face announcer. This, I think, is going to be um, a little tougher to get because I think a lot of people are going to be going for this. But you can see at the top we have um, 12 days, basically 13 days, 12 days, 21 hours. You can see your current points. And then we have the Ghost Face Announcer as the top 5% reward and then other rewards um, for different percentages there. So the way this works is that when you do these challenges that you can see, so the Easy Challenge gives you 3 points, the Hard Challenge gives you 7 points, the Weekly Challenge gives you 50 points, and then all of these towers, they all give you different amounts of points depending on the difficulty of the tower. So the Legacy Tower gives you 10, Arcade Tower gives you 5, Seasonal Tower gives you 30, um, and then these ones in the back here, the Hourly Towers, these give you differing amounts, 25 being the most. Um, they give you differing amounts depending on the difficulty of the tower. So 
what you need to do is you need to basically do these challenges, um, get as many points as you can so that at the end, when time runs out at the end of all this, you're in the top 5%. Now in previous, um, in the previous season, in the last season, getting a thousand points was pretty much a guarantee that you'd be in the top 5%. But as more people are learning about these challenges, because when this was first introduced, I think a lot of people kind of glazed over it. So as more people um, learn about these challenges and these rewards, and especially now with the top 5% one being a ghost face announcer, which I think a lot of people are going to want, um, you might need to get more points than just a thousand points. And that seems like a lot. And it is a lot. But my suggestion, guys, when it comes to these challenges and these points and whatnot, just pace yourself. You don't need to do everything in one day. Come back every couple days, boot up the game every couple days, do things that you were going to do anyway. So do like a few seasonal tower runs, do some hourly tower runs if you're trying to grind, um, do some legacy tower runs if you're trying to get previous uh, costumes from previous seasons. Let the points build up. And as you're doing towers, look at the easy challenge and the hard challenge. Try to go for them. So the hard challenge right now is 50 overhead attacks. That's a lot. They're not always that hard. Sometimes they're a lot easier and a lot less time consuming. Um, the easy challenge is obviously a lot easier. Just perform three animalities with any character. So just do those as you're doing the towers naturally. And the easy challenge and the hard challenge, when you beat them, they'll automatically reset. So either if you're, if you're up against a challenge you just do not want to do, you either have to wait for the timer to run out and it'll reset automatically, or you can force a reset by finishing the challenge and it'll be replaced with another one uh, immediately. So those are the important points about these Towers of Time challenges for any new players who didn't know about this. This is how you get some pretty cool stuff. Um, you can get some really exclusive skins, palettes, gear from these challenges. But again, be ready for, you know, in two weeks, you're probably going to have to get over a thousand points, especially if it's really good rewards um, to get some of these uh, some of these items. So those are the Towers of Time point challenges. That's That was introduced last season. That's how that works. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you guys too, because I think a lot of people forget about these too. If you press touchpad, and I think probably on Xbox or PC, whatever, to open up this menu on PS5, you press the touchpad. You can see there's daily quests, which give you um, seasonal credits and coins. There's also weekly quests, which give you... Um, every weekly, weekly quest will give you a new palette um, for an existing skin. A lot of people, I think, tend to overlook these. Um, but if you kind of get these done, and you only need to do five out of... Or I think six out of seven. Because there's one, two, three, yeah. So you, need, you only need to do six out of seven. I always skip the combat league fights one and I do the rest. Um, but if you do these, you can get like a special palette um, for that week. So keep that in mind too. That's just kind of like a little, a little extra bonus you can get and that you can work towards as you're doing other stuff. Um, the Legacy Tower um, costs 2,500 crowns to do. But this tower, when you beat it, and it's only level 30, so especially when you're higher level, you can just kind of speed through it. Um, this tower will give you, guaranteed at the end of the tower, a pallet um, or a skin. I think it might only be pallets, but I have, I think, gotten like, quote unquote, new skins before from these. Um, from previous seasons. The thing about this, though, is that I've done this tower over 100 times. Well over 100 times. There is no way that I missed that many pallets from previous seasons, considering I've been making these videos every season, I've been going through, beating everything 100%. There's no way I missed that many pallets. So I think what happened, what they've done, is there were a lot of pallets that were um, added to the game, but never really given out in any way. Like they were kind of like, they were rewards that were put in the game, but we weren't able to get them yet. The Legacy Tower is able to grab from that pool, which is really cool. Um, it's cool in the sense you can get all these pallets that you weren't really able to get before. It's also kind of crappy in the sense that you have to run this tower like 200 times to get all the missing pallets. But this is something I do when I'm just kind of like, I need to do these, you know, these point challenges um, and I have the crowns. I'll do the legacy tower because it allows me to get missing pallets as I'm doing this. So I'm just throwing that out there. That's a cool little thing. Up in the back here, you have the event towers. 
Um, these only show up when there's something special going on, usually with DLC fighters, or if there's like a holiday tower or something like that, like a Halloween tower that gives you special um, Halloween skins. I think that happened last season. Um, so right now it's the Ghost Face Trials. This will allow you to try out Ghost Face. Um, I think it's for about a week or so. Um, so if, if you don't want to buy Ghostface or you haven't bought Ghostface or you want to try Ghostface before you buy him, you can use these towers to try him out. Um, each tower also gives you um, some rewards. Sometimes it's skins, sometimes it's combat cards. I think in this case it's uh, Ghostface combat cards. So that's pretty cool. So always check up here if you see there's like a tower, an event tower up here. Check it out. You can get special rewards for that. They're really not that tough. Um, so you can do those whenever. And then I think, I think that covers pretty much all the tower stuff. Um, so like I said, guys, spread out your, your your game time. One of the most one of the most important things. Don't waste points. I guess is the best way I can put this. So if you're if you're playing through the seasonal tower, okay. Now don't forget these these seasons, they last for about two months. Sometimes this one I think is lasting until the end of the year. Um, you're going to have plenty of time to do the Seasonal Tower, to do the Legacy Tower, um, to grind the Hourly Tower, all that stuff. You guys are going to have tons of time to do this. What you don't want to do is when you're already in the top 5%, um, and I'm talking like guaranteed spot, let's say I have 2,000 points. So I'm pretty much locked in for top 5%. I really don't have to worry about getting more points uh, because whatever. What I would do personally is I would then stop playing, wait to get my top 5% reward, and then if I haven't finished the um, the Seasonal Tower or whatever, then when the rewards reset, I would go back and then continue the Seasonal Tower. Because otherwise, what's going to happen? I'm going to do the Seasonal Tower, which is something I was going to do anyway, and all those points that I'm going to be winning from the Seasonal Tower will pretty much be wasted because... I don't need those extra points to go above where I already am in the ranking and stuff like that. So you don't need to finish everything in like the first week. You don't need to finish the seasonal tower, get all that stuff in the first week. Kind of spread it out, be smart about it so that you can take a break <laughs> from Mortal Kombat every now and then, go and play something else, come back to it when the ranks reset and you've got your rewards so that stuff you were going to do anyway benefits you without you then being in a position after where you've already done everything you needed to do and then now you need to do extra stuff wasting your time kind of you know what i mean because you kind of finished everything in one week instead of spreading it out over several weeks um the best advice i can give is to kind of like spread it out be smart about it so that you're kind of killing two birds with one stone at all times um so that's for the towers of time that's my advice for that one thing I want to touch on is the um, the 5 million point trophy, which a lot of people, I think, struggle to get for the Platinum. The 5 million point trophy needs you to get 5 million points off of any tower. You need to, at the end of the tower, your score has to be above 5 million points. If it is, you get a trophy. I think a lot of people have trouble, for, have trouble with that. I found a trick, though, um, last season when they introduced... Um, animalities if you finish the stages with animalities you get a massive amount of points at the end of the tower so i'm not going to show you because there's no point in me just going through and doing animalities but my suggestion is go to this tower here um you could probably do an easier one doesn't really matter i always choose this one because this is the one that i'm going to be talking about after um go to this tower and even if you don't get flawless victories it doesn't really matter Finish every single fight of the three fights. Finish each one with an animality. I bet that at the end of the tower, you'll have um, well over 5 million points. I did it earlier. I didn't get a flawless victory on any of the stages. I intentionally got the shit, kick, the shit kicked out of me and then used an animality. And at the end of it, I had 11 million points. So that's my trick for getting the 5 million point trophy. Um, they might end up changing how scores or points are allocated. So if you want to take advantage of that, do it now before anything gets changed. But that's my advice is to go in, start the tower, do an animality for every single match. You should get enough points at the end of it to get the trophy. Now I'm going to be talking guys, there's, we're almost done. There's only a couple things left I want to talk about. So grinding is really important, obviously for you guys, you want to know tricks for getting experience and currency really quickly. 
I have some tricks for you guys. Now that you know the talisman to use and the relic to use, which again, I'm going to show you guys uh, in my list here. So the Ice Meteor Storm Talisman, you can go back and look at the chapter for talismans. I'll show you how to get that. The Relic Talisman, or sorry, Relic Talisman, the Relic, the uh, Zero to Death Relic, which turns off damage scaling. I think this is going to be really important because it'll, get, it'll allow you to get through fights a lot faster. My advice for if you're trying to grind everything at once, so if you want to master your fighters and your cameos, um, and you want to get um, currency at the same time, my advice is to do this hourly tower here. So this is the medium hourly tower. It's only three fights, but because it's a medium difficulty one, it's level 32, it'll give you more points compared to um, this easy one, which is level 30. It gives you more victory experience, more victory um, uh, experience to put towards your fighters and your cameos than this one would, but it's really not that much harder. It's pretty much the exact same thing. And a lot of these towers you're going to do, they're not even going to have any bosses. The modifiers aren't going to be anything to worry about. Um, so my suggestion is do this tower specifically because this is the easiest one to do um, and awards the most experience and the most currency per time spent. Any of these ones, they will give you more victory XP um, with, um, with the larger towers, but they're going to take longer to do. They're going to be a little bit harder because they're um, more difficult towers, so there's going to be more bosses, probably more annoying modifiers. Definitely don't do this with the seasonal tower. Um, the only time I would suggest using the seasonal tower to grind is if you haven't really started it yet, so it's still a really low level, and it's like a double XP weekend. If you wait for a double XP weekend and haven't done the seasonal tower yet and you start the seasonal tower, you can make insane amounts of experience. So I will say that, but otherwise, I would say if there's no double XP weekend going on and you just want to grind, this tower specifically is the best one. At the end of the tower, I think you get something like 1250 victory XP, um, which is a lot compared to the other towers. Um, you'll also be making bonus XP if you can finish each fight with a flawless victory and a brutality. Flawless victories is going to be harder because I know there's no invincible relic that I can guarantee you guys this season, but if you finish each fight with a brutality, you're going to be getting extra experience as well per fight. You're going to be getting extra currency per fight. And then at the end of the tower, you guys are going to notice you, you only get this at the end. At the end of the tower, you guys are going to notice you get victory XP and it's going to be something like 1250 uh, victory XP. It's going to go a long way to increasing the mastery of your fighters and your cameos. Um, and I think that this tower again the fastest one you can run it's only three three uh fights you guys can run this over and over and over if you use the setup with the talisman and the relic you really shouldn't have any trouble especially if you've gone and you've boosted your stats with the full herbs i mentioned before um you're gonna speed through these fights and you can beat them in like less than a couple minutes so if you keep doing this you'll rack up the currency and the experience very quickly so that's my suggestion for um, the grinding situation on double XP weekends, which are a random thing that Netherrealm does. We don't know when they're going to do it. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. But on a double XP weekend, you'll get double the experience and double the currency, unless they've changed it. But last season on the double XP weekend, I was getting double currency as well. So that, again, really important. Keep that in mind. If you want to, I wouldn't say wait. Don't wait for double XP weekends if you're trying to, you know, grind your fighters and things like that. But when a double XP weekend comes by, definitely take advantage of it. Um, and again, if you haven't done the seasonal tower on a double XP weekend yet, then, and like the seasonal tower is still a low level, the seasonal tower will give you even more experience because the victory XP you get at the end of a seasonal tower run is pretty high. But I would only recommend it if the Seasonal Tower is still a low level and it's a double XP weekend. Otherwise, the amount of time it takes compared to the Hourly Tower, um, because of the, you know, you're going to be fighting boss enemies, you're going to be doing all these modifiers, it's not worth it. You're going to be spending way too much time. You're not going to be, ma be making as much experience. So stick with the Hourly Tower. This will be your best way to grind uh, quickly. The reason you can't do stages, just regular stages in Invasion Mode, is because the stages in invasion mode only give you um, the victory XP once. If you redo the stage, 
you won't get victory XP, you'll only get the bonus experience, which is awarded for flawless victories and brutalities or fatalities or whatever. So it's not worth redoing stages in Invasion. It's better to go to the Towers of Time and do this tower because this will, every time you beat it, it'll give you um, the victory XP. So this is the best way to get, um, you know, grind out your characters, grind out your currency. Um, so that's my suggestion for grinding. And... I will say for crowns specifically, there's one trick because I know crowns are really important. You guys, you need to spend crowns for the potions. You need to spend crowns for the full herb stages. You need to spend crowns for this legacy tower. Crowns, they have made crowns the most important currency pretty much other than seasonal credits. There is a way to get um, a good amount of crowns pretty quickly, but you need to be good at the test your might stages. So let me show you really quickly my trick. Um, so if we go to the Tarkatan colony. <clears throat> so we're going to go down here. To the shop. The potion shop. Now this, I showed you guys this, this shop earlier. I'll open up the menu you guys can see. So this is where I'm standing right now. Bottom, bottom left there. And you do need, again, you need to have the uh, final invasion boss item to break this barrier so that you can come in here and access this area. Once you're here, just go over here. And this is a test your might stage. It costs 125 crowns to attempt. The test your might stage is itself not super easy. If you guys aren't good at test your might, it might prove to be a little difficult. If you're better at the test your might stuff, this probably won't be that much of an issue. What is so good about this though is that if you beat this stage you're guaranteed to get two items one of them is a bit of item uh which is a uh i think it's a component either a component or a catalyst um for talismans and the other one is a nether flame which again is i think a, a catalyst or a component for talismans i'll show you guys what they look like so if i go into my inventory so these like bits of havoc right and the nether flame i think is down here yeah here we go so you'll you'll get these things like bits of and you're gonna get bits of havoc bits of uh scorpion whoever's face you smash during the test your might that's who you're gonna get the bits of um and then you'll get these nether flame items now here's how you make a ton of money when you do this test your might it costs 125 crowns to do if you can beat the test your might you get those two items now if i go to um let's go to the shop down here now if I go to sell I can sell the bits of havoc for a thousand crowns and I can sell the nether flame for 200 crowns so for doing the test your might stage at 125 crowns I'm losing 125 crowns and I'm gaining 1200 crowns you're walking away with a thousand seventy five crown profit every time you do the test your might if you're good at the test your might stages you can rack this up super quickly you can spend five minutes and easily get well over ten thousand crowns um this is my trick for getting crowns very quickly there's also people have said um you know titan battles when you do titan battles you can get a lot of crowns um, you saw when I beat the final invasion boss, I also got a lot of crowns, but I found this to be the fastest way, in my opinion, to do it consistently. Um, if you guys have other ways of getting them, I know some people leave comments saying, you know, no, wait, that method sucks. <laughs> we have other ways of doing it. That's totally fine. If you guys have better ways to get crowns, um, go for it. Use those methods. I think that's great. You can even leave those, uh, those methods in the comments. I'm happy for you guys to uh, share other methods with each other. Um, but this is a really quick way. I This is my suggestion. This is what I was doing last season um, because you can get crowns very quickly off of this. Um, in like less than like 30 seconds, you can have 1200 crowns. That stacks up really fast um, to the point where do it for five minutes and you're set for like several legacy towers. Um, you're set for potions, all that stuff. So that's my advice in terms of crowns. Um, so the last two things I'm going to cover is seasonal tower and Titan battles. So for the seasonal tower, 
Um, I've already spoken about the seasonal tower um, a little bit. The seasonal tower is still very annoying. Um, they changed it to seven fights last season as opposed to ten. It used to be ten back in the day. Now it's seven fights, but the problem is there's a lot more bosses. <clears throat> so even though it's only seven fights now, there's still it still takes a while because you're going to be ending up doing some of the bosses are two round bosses some of them are three round bosses that have their full uh titan move list with like those crazy special moves that you have to watch out for so it can still take a while and not only that you can see if i open up this my rewards complete 24 times for reward for some reason it usually gives you a reward every five levels uh it used to be three levels they changed it to five this season, I'm only seeing a reward for, I think it was 26 initially, 26 completions, but I've already beaten it a couple times. Um, I think this is because I've already gotten a lot of the pallets for this season from doing season one and from doing the legacy tower and stuff like that. So I think it's only showing me new pallets that I haven't gotten yet. Um, some of you may still see that you're getting a reward every five, uh, every five levels, but for me, it's only showing up as 24 uh, or 26 now showing up as 24 um, so I don't know if that's for everybody that you're only gonna see that it's only every 26 completions you're getting a, a new skin or a new palette um, you guys can let me know in the comments I think it's most likely though for some people who have already finished this they're not going to be getting as many rewards other people who haven't done this season yet who don't have a lot of these palettes they I think are gonna see more rewards in the seasonal tower so that gives less incentive for those of us that have already beaten it but it is what it is um you can get dragon blood i mentioned before dragon blood for creating talismans one thing about the seasonal tower the seasonal tower i i'm pretty sure every completion um is guaranteed to give you one dragon blood so if you need dragon blood to um upgrade your um talismans you can run the seasonal tower a few times. Make sure not to get rid of the dragon blood. Don't sell it. Don't discard it. That's probably the most important resource for people who are trying to um, create their own talismans. So keep those dragon blood items, um, and you can use those to guarantee that when you make or upgrade your talismans, uh, they're not going to break. It reduces the risk when you're creating a talisman. You can see the, the risk bar go down. It'll um, reduce the risk so that you can make it guaranteed and you don't have to worry about them, you know, being destroyed as you're creating those talismans. Um, I'm going to suggest using the same loadout that I showed you guys for everything else. So the Ice Meteor Storm Talisman and the Zero to Death Relic. These are the two I'm going to suggest you use for the Seasonal Tower, unless you guys make your own. Um, the Seasonal Tower, like I said, maybe it'll drop an Invincible Relic, maybe it'll drop a better Relic than even those. I don't know. Um, but to start you off, I think these are the best ones because, the again, the Ice Storm will freeze enemies and interrupt their attacks as well as doing a little bit of damage. And the Zero to Death will turn off damage scaling so that while they're frozen, while they're being interrupted, you're doing full damage with all of your attacks and not having to worry about any of them being scaled down. So I think that's a really good mix for the seasonal tower. Um, again, once you get some dragon blood, feel free to um, upgrade your talismans, upgrade the ice storm talisman uh, to have more charges or to do more damage, that kind of thing. Um, that's going to be what I'm going to do eventually. Once I have enough dragon blood, I'm going to upgrade my talismans a little bit. Um, but I think that's a good that's a good starting point. You guys can obviously you know adjust that, work on that as you want with other relics, other talismans. But that's my suggestion for the seasonal tower. Um, the most important thing, again, guys, if you're going into the seasonal tower and you're being one shotted you're being killed by modifiers or you're being killed by bosses, you just can't beat a boss because he's doing too much damage, your stats are too low. So go and do the full herb stages that I showed you guys before. Do a few of the full booster stages to get that extra elemental resistance. Um, those stat bonuses are going to be more important than anything else, anything else other than, you know, including talismans and relics. The full herbs and those stat bonuses are the most important thing in getting a leg up for the seasonal tower and other hard stages in invasion mode so keep that in mind take your time grind a little bit because 
honestly, you guys are going to be wasting more time um, taking, you know, half an hour to be one boss at level 75 than you're going to be taking to go and do some herb stages, get those extra stat points, and then having a much easier time in the higher levels of the seasonal tower. Um, so grind a little to save your time, uh, to save yourself a lot of time later on. Um, that is my advice to you for the seasonal tower. Um, lastly, Titan battles. I can't show you guys Titan battles because they're not here right now. Let me go back to the Misa. So for anyone um, who's been doing these for a while, you'll already know what Titan battles are. Um, for new players who haven't experienced Titan battles before, what will happen is that randomly for I think like three days, three or four days um, throughout the season, usually twice a season I think is the most I've seen it, you'll see in the bottom left here underneath the fire temple and to the left of the living forest, you're going to see another Misa show up, um, which is a pyramid. And it'll have two fights. One will be the Titan battle from the previous uh, season. One will have the Titan battle for this season. So if you missed last season's Titan battle, you can do it on the next season. But after that, you've, you've missed it completely until it comes around again. So keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> so for Titan battles, you can use the same setup that I showed you guys for the hourly tower and the seasonal tower. Um, and... What's really good about Titan Battles is that not only do you get exclusive skins and palettes um, based on what the Titan is wearing, you can also get a lot of crowns. Um, for beating a Titan Battle, you get like 5,000 crowns. I think it's a little glitchy because there's been a couple times where I've done the Titan Battle and haven't gotten anything uh, in terms of currency. But most of the time, I'll get 5,000 crowns for beating a Titan Battle, so that's also a really good way to get crowns. I'm also going to let you guys know, some people are like, how do you get the silver and gold Titan palettes from the Titan battles? What you have to do is every time you beat the Titan battle with a new Titan, so let's say you, um, you know, Scorpion, you're fighting the Scorpion Titan, you'll beat him a few times. Every time you beat him, you're going to get a new palette for his skin that he's wearing in the Titan battle. Um, once you've gotten all of those, you can get two more palettes. <clears throat> it's like secret palettes, pretty much. One is silver, one is gold. Um, to get the silver one, you have to get all the other skins first. So keep beating them until you just stop getting um, pallets. And then for the silver one, you have to do a fatality on the Titan to get the silver pallet. But don't use the same character as the Titan because I think it glitches out. <clears throat> it glitches out and makes it so that you can't, um, it won't drop the silver, uh, the silver pallet. I noticed that before and I was like, why isn't it dropping the silver pallet? It's because I was using the same character as the one I was fighting. So I think it was against, um, oh, who was it? It might have been against like Quan Chi or something like that, or Li Mei. Um, I was using the same character, and so I couldn't, it wasn't giving me the palette. As soon as I switched to another character and beat, and beat them with that one and did a fatality, it gave me the silver palette. <clears throat> For the gold palette, um, you actually have to do a mirror match. So... Use the same character and cameo that the Titan is using and beat them with it. Don't worry about doing a fatality or a brutality or anything like that. In fact, don't just in case it glitches out like it does with the silver palette. But for the gold palette, get all the other palettes first and then use uh, do a mirror match. So if you're fighting Scorpion and he's using a Kung Lao cameo, use Scorpion and a Kung Lao cameo and beat that fight. And don't do a fatality or anything. You should get the gold the uh, gold uh, palette for that skin. Um, so that's Titan Battles. Um, so for those of you who haven't experienced Titan Battles, that's basically how that works. And I think that's basically it. Um, I don't really have anything else to go over um, with you guys. I think this has been, how long has this been now? This has been like an hour and a half video. So I'm sorry it's so long, but like I said, I had a lot to cover. I want to answer all of your questions. I know a lot of you, you wish that I went a little bit more in depth with things sometimes. Um, I get a lot of questions about the same things in the comments. I wanted to make sure that I covered everything for you guys. So again, I'm sorry for the longer video. Um, if you guys preferred the other type of video where it was just a really quick like showing of the hourly tower and the uh, relic and the talisman with like a walkthrough in the video description. Um, again, the reason I didn't do that this time was because I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys as much information as possible to really cover the bases and help all of you 
especially new players or players that might have missed things. Um, I want to make sure that I cover all of that for you guys so that we're all kind of getting through this as easily as possible, as efficiently as possible, because even with all these updates and these quality of life updates and things like that, and even with this guide that I put together for you guys, um, I know that the invasion grind can be really tough. I know the seasonal tower grind can be really annoying. Um, so again, put all that out to help you guys. I hope, um, I hope it helps. I hope it works for you guys. Um, you can let me know in the comments, uh, what you thought and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, Keep in mind, one, th one last thing I want to say, keep in mind, anything I showed you guys today, it is possible they could update the game and they could nerf something or they could make something better. Um, but it's very possible that currency rewards and things like that or um, crown costs for certain stages, like the full herb stages and stuff like that, it's very possible that they could be changed at some point. So... All the things I'm showing you, if you come to the video and this is like, you know, a month down the line and something's changed, uh, I apologize. I'll try to keep up to date with that. If I see anything has changed, I'll put a comment in uh, like a pinned comment on the video um, to make you guys aware of that. But usually they don't make any big changes between uh, or before seasons. It's usually, um, or sorry, during a season, it's usually... Uh, between other seasons so when the next season comes along they'll release a big update which usually will change a lot of things um, but usually during a season we don't really see that many changes maybe a couple currency reward changes here and there but that's about it um, so yeah I really hope this helped you guys out thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it I really appreciate your support you guys are amazing um, you know always coming into the channel and uh, you know letting me know that you know how much this has helped and stuff like that so i really appreciate that and yeah that's about it um so thank you guys again so much um i really appreciate it and i will see you next season uh which is probably going to be a rerun of season two so i will see you guys next season with more information um more deep dive more guides um to kind of try to make all this easier all right so until then take care